Colorado and Dion have the number one transfer portal class in college football. Big Smitty, uh, Big Matt. Um, the most impressive part is a write-up, they said. Coach Prime was only focused on one position group this week, the offensive line. Colorado landed five offensive linemen and a couple other offensive stars. So I think they only got four linemen, if I'm not mistaken, after doing a little research. They may have gotten more now, but – the fifth one was a kid who apparently has lied several years in a row about getting offered from Colorado, who was a Jackson State kid, and he never did uh, really get offered. So he's just a kid, I guess, is lying on social media. And then there was a graphic made of him going. That's the kid I was actually talking shit about. Remember I said it? Yeah, that kid, yeah. <laughs> that kid follows me on Twitter. <laughs> And he retweeted that. And I'm like, what the fuck? Um, so anyway, what is the latest news, Big Matt, that you know about on this uh, on this uh, Dion thing as far as alignment? Have they gotten any high school kids or anybody else that you uh, that you know about or just, just the portal kid in the one high school? Uh, no, I've been talking to Load Hold all week. We actually uh, been back and forth pretty consistently, which is good. The communication there is always important. Um I really like what they've done in the portal. Like, I mean, look, the portal is what it is. We can all have our own personal feelings about it. I'm kind of burned out about the portal, but at the same time, it is a way to quick fix, hopefully. Um, you know, getting Jordan Seaton is a massive get. I mean, he's the, the Orlando Pace, Walter Jones type. So, you know, him early enrolling could suffice for his red shirt. And I'm sure that, you know, when I say it's a grown man's game, he's a grown man. So I don't think he's going to have any problems acclimating, although playing as a freshman is different. So we'll see how all that goes. But, I, you know, I think the kid is elite. I mean, he's the number one player in his position for a reason. Um, so bringing him in, and I'd imagine that he'll be your left tackle immediately. Uh, the Brown kid from Houston, his 50-game starter, he can play. That's a huge get. Well, the guard position last year was absolutely atrociously terrible um, in Boulder. So that that has to happen. So Shador can step up. You know, he likes to hold the ball and, and make sure his guys can get open. But he needs a firm pocket to do that. So we need to be wide on the edges and firm in the middle. Um, losing Van Wells to Oregon State, it hurts. But at the same time, you know, it it, it is what it is. It's the nature of the business that we're in. So the the other guys that they brought in the big kid from Indiana, I understand six six three forty looks appealing. I want to make sure that he's in shape. That's that's all I'm saying. Like it's six six three forty. You better have some fast ass feet. Otherwise, you're. I mean, Schmidt can attest to this as a defensive yeah. lineman. Both of us, I I like big lumberers because that means I can just make you look dumb. Not yeah. saying that's what he is, but if you're six six three forty, you probably could lose thirty pounds and be a pretty fluid athlete at six six. So we'll see what happens with the big kid from Indiana. He's started a lot of games. He's got a lot of experience, which is what they need and what they've been lacking. Uh, Savion Washington will be coming back at right tackle healthy. So that'll be a big upgrade just because last year he was banged up so bad and, and playing through injury at the end of the year. You know, he had to play and it didn't go well. And again, he's a he's a learning type, not a losing type. He's not going to sit around and just, you know, cry and whine and bitch like all the people on social media and in the comment section. So I really like what they've been doing. Uh, you know, the, the high school part of recruiting, it's kind of dead, bro. Like, if you're not super elite, you're not going – you can't even get a look because the transfer That's portal is wild. limited. So it's not just wild. It's like almost – the way that it's happening all over the country, I'm dumbfounded by it. Like, there are legitimate – like glorified power five division one players who are not or are going to go like one double a because the coaches would rather take somebody else off of us of scrap heap and i'm not saying that everybody out of the transfer portal is a turd i'm also not saying everybody in the transfer portal is any good so you've got right. to, to it's my case basis and you know i wish more programs were still trying to build the the, the way that programs used to but at the same time it's just not the nature of the business anymore so you got to play the game that's being played and see you plays the shit out of it i'll tell you that i mean hey, coach, Matt. Coach, coach prime plays people like a fucking fiddle and i'm pretty i'm i'm excited about the future i'm not gonna lie the in the portal talk i know you started this segue off with uh you're kind of over the portal i've been over it for three years mm -hmm. but let me ask you 
Texas kid, Malik Murphy, quarterback, backup, who started three games when uh, Ewers got hurt. <clears throat> he has entered the portal and said that he will not be a college football playoff backup. I mean, if, <laughs> I don't know if you can say anything that's more selfish, but this is what this mercenary business has become. This is what I've been saying for months, that we will have playoff sit-outs. That is why I'm actually against the 12-team playoff thing, because I think you're going to have more of this. What's your thoughts on Malik Murphy sitting out after he's played, after he's cried, after he's bled with this group of people, getting him to a playoff final four team. And now you're saying I'm out. I'm not even going to play. He's not going to play in the, in the game. He's not going to play. In it. Um, he wasn't going to play anyway. He's the fucking third string quarterback. I mean, what? He's a backup. Well, he didn't get him there. He he didn't throw he won a, three games as a starter, bro. He didn't get him. He didn't get him there. He's not the reason that they're in the Big Twelve title so game. If they lose one of those games, he starts. Are they in the playoffs? Probably not. But they didn't. So that's my point. He helped them get there. So you're defending him. You think it's cool? He's out. Fuck it. I'm defending him now. I'm no, just I'm saying, saying that's like, my question. Do you you're you're okay with him leaving right now? I don't care about the backup quarterback. If he doesn't want to play, then Arch Manning will play. Kick rocks, motherfucker. Like if the, if he wants to make it about him and be like, uh, I'm not going to be a backup, then don't be a backup later. Don't you don't want to I mean, be that's part the of point. That's the point. I'm just saying this is what we're allowing. Part of, part of it. Get out. Like I, yeah. the backup quarterback doesn't want to be here. Then later, Archie Manning's Arch Manning's going to be the fucking guy anyway. So when you, I don't know if yours is going to go pro or not. I, if I were him, I would come back and he, no, he's, he's coming a, back to be the number one pick next year. He's a good player, so. He's coming back. You know, if Murphy wants to be this guy, then cool. I mean, I'm not going to fucking, I'm not going to like, I'm not going to get all emotional over a fucking backup that doesn't want to be around. Like, yeah, I, 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 I feel, I, I I feel you. I started the show saying like, I'm not going to get emotional. I just think that like, you got a chance to win the Natty though. And it's like, damn, like whether you're a backup or not, like, this is this is once in a lifetime type shit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like this stupid motherfucker doesn't understand that. Like, what happens if Quinn gets hurt against Washington, and then all of a sudden you get a chance to go play and be the guy? Come on, like, bro. You've been all, you've done all this work just to get to this point and just act like this. Then okay, later. Like, I, I the emotion part of all of this. Like, I'm so burned out with everyone's emotions in football. Like, I can't wait till the off season, bro. I can't fucking wait so people can like, so I can just like take a break and not have to worry about, not even worry. It's listen to all this emotional garbage and the fans emotional garbage and the, the, the contradictions and hypocrisy and the fucking media and all these players and everybody's fucking feelings. I mean, it's just, it makes me want to throw up. I got, let me ask you this though. To dive deeper into this portal thing, like I started to show off with this rant and I'm like, see, there's a difference between showing that you actually give a shit about these kids, because if you did, I started the show by giving a little recruiting game away um, by saying I would have told the kid to stay at Texas if I'm the one trying to poach him out of the portal or put him in the portal because you got to put him in the portal before you can poach him from the portal. The problem is, and what I'm being told by a lot of D1 guys are, these guys from other schools, let's say school B is the poacher. Well, they have to poach you to get you in the portal first. You can't just go from Texas to Colorado. You have to enter the portal first. So the poacher is, to me, the, the I guess, the shady operator in this whole thing that yep. starts in the shake lines after games. You and I have talked about, Matt, for, for a year now. Starts after the shake after the game and shake lines. It's even happening before the game in stretch lines. That person to me is someone that I would tell the moms of this kid, don't fuck with him. He don't care about you. If a coach is not telling you to finish the national championship run that you started, then he don't give a fuck about you. I'd be telling that kid, hey dog, start play, finish the season, and then check in with me. We'll get you some late start classes. Uh, we'll get you some late start. But Matt, you're laughing because you know these cats have no clue about this. Like the the real average fanboy on Twitter that you and I face every day have not a fucking clue what it, we're even talking about. But yet they know more than us. Like there's a thing called late start classes. You can still get them enrolled. You can still get them in spring ball. 
But guess what? These poachers are telling this kid and his mama, oh, we need you by spring. We need you by January to get you in class. We need you by spring ball. Blah, 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 right. blah. We don't really give a fuck about you, homie. They want you as a number. So I find that we allow it more than we coach it, and that is why this thing's getting out of control to where Matt and I just despise it. I mean, the, the tampering part of this is disgusting. It is disgusting. If, if the transfer portal wants to be open and they just want to have the Wild West, that's one thing. But the fact that, again, I'm going to reiterate this. I've got college coaches, rather than calling me, talking about high school kids and how they can recruit them. They're calling me and asking me to call other kids on other rosters to see if they will leave to go play for them. And I, that's not my that's job. Crazy. It's not right. my job to do your dirty fucking shady work. Like, have, have one of your GAs call him. Just because you know I have a relationship with the kid and I placed him somewhere and, like, I, I train him and help him, now you want me to be dirty like you? I don't operate like that. And it's one of the reasons why I don't get along with so many people is because I don't conform. I don't just sit here and I don't change my fucking my, – my scales like a chameleon. I don't do that shit. I'm the same all the time. I don't – I can't. I can't change who I am depending on who I'm talking to left and right. So I feel like the entire transfer portal thing, the tampering part is such a disgusting part of it, man. It makes not only that, it's teaching the fucking kids the absolute worst in how and how to develop and how to like push through things. Just quit and somebody else will give you a bigger bag. And if he doesn't like you, then we'll go somewhere else. If he doesn't like you, we'll go somewhere else. You never have to overcome anything. There's no adversity. There's no nothing. And then in the transfer portal, guys go into the transfer portal and sit there and then start pointing fingers like they're the only ones sitting in the transfer portal. Like you weren't told, like you didn't tell them 50 times. If you go to the transfer portal, there's a high degree that you're probably going to sit in it. Be careful that you're not, you know, doing this just for clout chasing. If you're the guy out of place, it might, it might be better to stay at that place and develop rather than just jump. If you want to jump, that's your decision, but just be aware of what is actually happening. And I'm telling you, man, the co coaches don't want to coach anymore. They're fed up and they they don't want to be involved. They I don't know how many guys I've talked to that absolutely hate their jobs, but it's the highest that I've ever heard. And on top of that, the players now, like high school kids are getting overlooked and underdeveloped, which means – <clears throat> they're going to go to a low level school where they're going to probably play pretty well just to go and sit in the transfer portal. Is this all just a big, like, can I got to get to power power five D one and play or my life isn't content. You know how many great players I know that are from one double A's and D twos and D threes and like the, the non group of five schools, guys who had to fucking like walk through hell to get to where they, they, they wanted to get to in the NFL or whatever. And they did it. And that was the reason why they're successful. Yeah. So many small school guys that are successful because of the adversity they had to go through, not because they ran from it. And I just, I, I don't, as a guy who develops and places talent, it's, it's becoming, I re, I'm going to say this again. I'm not going to, after the transfer portal cycles done, I'm not doing this transfer portal shit anymore, dog. If you're a grad transfer and you graduate, somebody will pick you up at the transfer portal. Go. You don't need my help. But if you're that, to answer this guy, kid, if you're a high school kid and you just got into the portal, or I just placed you in high school, and and now you're two years in, three years into high college, and now you want to go back into the portal, I, I man, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do this anymore because it's yeah, it doesn't matter if you're good or not anymore. It, it's all numbers and and backdoor handshakes and tampering, and it's dirty, and I don't like it. Right. Yeah, this, this John G guy says that uh, he gets what I'm saying, but but if staying past the portal closing will have him lose time learning a new system, he has to leave now. Homie, that's not my fucking issue. That's a you problem. That's a you problem. You're making excuses for dudes. Again, what Matt just said, we're tired of hearing them. That's a choice you have to make. Life's about choices, homie. Guess what the choice was? University of Texas. I signed to go there. That's your fucking problem, not mine. You're making excuses for these dudes to fucking leave, though, because they need to go learn a new system. Get the fuck out of here. That's a you problem. How about you make a better choice when you select the fucking school? It's like selecting a wife, homie. How about you do a better job? Yeah, don't fuck that up. <laughs>